Good morning. Today is the second day of July in this 2024th year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Weather report's very simple. We have a little more temperate weather. Uh, a cool front must have moved through, and it was pleasant last night and in the early mornings. Uh, I hope your day is going well. I'd like to begin today with a reading of the 150th Psalm. Praise the Lord with trumpets. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everyone that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hans Kung writing in the church about the Holy Spirit. The work of the Spirit, the, the Spirit works where he wills. The Spirit of God cannot be restricted in his operation by the church. He is at work not only in the offices of the church, but where he wills, in the whole peoples of God. He is at work not only in the holy city, but where he wills, in all of the churches of the one church. He is at work not only in the Catholic church, but where he wills, in Christianity as a whole. And finally, he is at work not only in Christianity, but where he wills in the whole world. The power of the Spirit of God can pass through all walls, even church walls. It is true that the Holy Spirit has his dwelling and his temple in the church, which he fills and which he governs. Here his power is especially revealed, since in the church and through the church, the word of God is preached and his sacraments are administered. But the Spirit of God if domiciled in the church, is not domesticated in it. He is and remains the free spirit of the free Lord, not only of the holy city, not only of church offices, not only of the Catholic church, not only of Christians, but the whole world. The spirit, as it were, is at work when he wills. The spirit of God is not, of course, a spirit of arbitrariness or apparent freedom, but of real freedom. He is a spirit of order, not chaos, peace, not contradictions, in the church as well as in the world. This is what Paul had to remind the Corinthians, who, proud of their spiritual gifts, had neglected order in the church. God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, arbitrariness, and disorder and chaos in the church cannot be the work of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, God's Spirit does not blow when he must, uh, but only when he wills. No decrees of the church in doctrine or practice can force him to act or not to act at a given time. True, God is absolutely free and is thus free, even with regard to his freedom. The implications of that passage to me are quite simple. We do not control God's will and God's way or the work of God's spirit, where it will work, with whom and to through whom it works. We are gifted, however, with the knowledge that in the waters of baptism, we receive that same spirit that the children of Jesus, his apostles, disciples received at their own baptisms or at their anointing when he appeared to them and breathed upon them and empowered them for great things. And so that spirit abides within us to do wondrous and great things using the gifts and talents that we possess by the hand of God, and it works in mysterious ways as well. We do not believe and affirm as Christians that God is limited only to us, 
because of his Christ. He remains God of all of creation. And he calls us who have embraced his Christ to share some good news that we have. Empowered by the Spirit, led and guided through that same Spirit, we have some wondrous news to share about God's Son, Jesus, who has redeemed us from our sins, who would redeem the entire world. And ours is to be a messenger of that same. Where and how that Spirit works is up to still God, and God may have some surprises in store for us as yet. And let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Spirit, which guides and leads us and shows us your pathway. Help us to embrace the gifts that you have given to us. Help us to trust in your leading and guiding where we may be taken by you, not according to our own will. You showed us that in the person of Jonah, who, reluctant as he was to do your will, in spite of his strong will and desire, you accomplished wonders through him and brought a nation to repentance. Work through us, O Lord, this day and each day. Empower us for good. Let us be true reflections of your Christ. Be of presence and help to the peoples of Gaza, of Ukraine, of places in this world where there is conflict. Be of encouragement and strength to our nation as we struggle to discern our future pathways through presidential elections that are upon us. Bring to bear that candidate which is most worthy to lead and guide our great nation. We thank you this week for the independence that you have wrought through the peoples who have preceded us. Might we adhere to those principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness guaranteed by our Constitution and governing documents, and might we not be led astray by those that would change those things and principles that we hold dear. Help us to be a godly people and care for those that we lift up to you this day for your healing help. For our neighbor Frank, as he recovers from major surgeries and difficulties and the presence of cancer in his body. For Barry, who's received good reports and soon to be released from doctor's care for Gail, for Charlotte, for Laura, for Jenny, for Linda, for Donna and for Nikki and Tom, for Elaine, for Miriam, for James and Evelyn, for Evelyn Tompkins, Mark and Katie, for all uh, Kenneth and Gay, and for all others that have trusted and count upon your strength to see them through to better days. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, giving you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, to stay and forevermore. Amen.